there are around half a million large goods vehicles on the road, and their drivers literally keep the wheels of industry moving. As a driver, you are as responsible for your vehicle's roadworthiness as your employer is. If you drive an unroadworthy vehicle, you could be fined and have your license endorsed or removed. And the most serious offences carry prison sentences. Vehicle and Operator Services Agency, VOSA, and police also have the option of issuing fixed penalty notices to drivers found to have broken that law at roadside checks. Fixed penalties always include a fine, but can also attract penalty points on your driving license. In law, you'll normally be disqualified from driving any vehicle if you tot up 12 points over a three-year period. VOSA will also be keeping a record of the fixed penalties you receive, and if you get too many, the agency could report the matter to the traffic commissioner, who could suspend or revoke your vocational driving license. There are two consequences of drivers not carrying out their checks. First of all, their vehicles could be put off the road by an examiner when they do their roadside checks. That causes inconvenience for the driver and for the operator. Secondly, they could be involved in some sort of accident where either the driver or other road users could be killed or seriously injured. A daily walk round check for a uh, for a driver should only take five to ten minutes. He's looking for um, the bits and pieces that uh, are there, that they're secure, that things are clean, that things are working, that nothing is loose, that nothing is going to be a uh, problem for road safety for other road users. So really it's vital that these five or ten minutes a day um, are spent um, checking around and making sure everything is 100 percent. If you're a professional that's what you would do. A crucial part of this is routine vehicle checks every time the vehicle is used, carried out by the driver. It only takes a few minutes. Remember, it's your responsibility, so carry out a routine check even if you believe that the vehicle has already been driven and checked that day. When using any vehicle for the first time, at the start of or during your shift, you should always carry out a short walk-around check. This will help make sure that the vehicle is fit for the road. This is equally important if the vehicle is borrowed or hired. Your company may have its own special rules about checking vehicles and for help or advice you should first talk to your manager. For the purposes of this film, our drivers will be checking three different vehicles. An 18-ton curtain cider, an Arctic combination with a tank semi-trailer and a rigid fitted with a crane and drop side body. Whatever vehicle you drive, you'll see that the principles are the same. Don't forget, it's your responsibility to be fully aware of any special requirements your particular vehicle may have, and to be satisfied that all is well with it before leaving the yard. It doesn't necessarily matter in which order you check items, but what is important is that you adopt a methodical routine of doing things, such as the one detailed in this DVD so that by keeping to your routine every day, you're less likely to miss anything. On approaching your vehicle, make sure that it's sitting square and not leaning to either side. Look underneath the front of the vehicle for any sign of fluid leaks, such as oil or coolant. If you use a tachograph to record your driver's hours, you must start using the equipment as soon as you take over the vehicle. Having dismounted from the cab, the first checks to be carried out should be the engine oil and coolant level, and these must always be checked before you start the engine. While at the front of the vehicle, it's a good idea to carry out a visual check of undergrill items such as the washer bottle and clutch fluid. On some vehicles, the engine oil level can be checked electronically in the cab. Next, turn on the ignition, and from the driver's seating position, carry out a check of the interior driving controls and instruments. Look and listen out for warning lamps and devices. If a warning light or buzzer is indicating a fault, don't ignore it. If you're coupled to a trailer, do the warning lights show all is well with it? Look at the general condition of the cab interior, including items that could obscure your vision, obstructions in the footwell, and the condition of the pedal rubbers. Check the wipers and washers, the horn, demisters, and temperature controls. Does the parking brake function correctly? Make sure that it locks firmly in the on position and that the warning lamp works. Make sure that the air brake system pressure gauges are working and reading adequate pressure. 
Check for leakage of air and ensure that the low pressure warning device operates correctly by pressing the foot brake several times, reducing the air pressure to activate the warning. Now start the engine. With the engine running, check that the air gauges are registering an increase in pressure. At this point, using your mirrors, look for excessive exhaust smoke and at the same time check the condition of the mirrors. Cracked or broken mirrors should be replaced before you set off. With the engine still running, turn the steering wheel to see that it operates smoothly and that there's no excessive play. Now carry out a check of the vehicle lights. Make sure that the indicators, hazard warning lights and instrument illumination are functioning correctly. Don't forget to check the rear fog lamp and that the telltale warning is working. Check rotating beacons if fitted. If you have a workmate with you, they can assist you with checking the lights, particularly the brake and reversing lights. If not, try using reflective surfaces like mirrors or windows or leave the lights on so you can check them at the same time as the rest of your vehicle. Dismount from the cab and starting at the offside door, check all visible components and equipment from ground level to the top of the vehicle. Work your way from the offside in an anti-clockwise direction around the vehicle. You're looking to make sure that items are secure, in good condition and that they're working. At the front, check the lights, bodywork and bumpers. Are your lights and number plates clean? Don't forget to look at items which are high up on the way round as well as lower down. Then work your way around the wing and down the near side of the vehicle. The condition and security of your wheels and tyres are critical to your vehicle's safety. For this reason, the amount you can be fined if defects are found are considerably more for these items and will also attract penalty points on your licence. Check they're in good condition, that there are no bulges, abrasions or tears in the tyres. Look at the tread depth. The legal minimum is one millimetre for all the large vehicles featuring in this film. Do the tyres look underinflated? Is there any obvious bulging of the tyre walls? One way of checking axles fitted with twin tyres is that you should be able to see between them and their inner walls should not touch. See if any wheel nuts are worn or loose. Look for signs of insecurity such as rust marks or other indications of wear. If wheel nut indicators are in use, Check they're correctly aligned. Once you've checked the near side front wheel and tyre, continue down that side, checking things along the way. Does the passenger door shut properly? And is the handle secure? If you're driving an Arctic, make sure the coupling lamp is working. On Arctics and drawbars, remember that all the air in electrical Susies must be properly connected and secured. Check that the locking handle on the fifth wheel is soundly in position and that the safety locking device is correctly deployed. Make sure that nothing has been left lying about on the catwalk and listen for air leaks. Ensure that the trailer's landing leg are raised, that the feet are not loose or damaged and the handle is stored away correctly. Vehicles often have a storage locker fitted. If so, make sure that the door is securely fastened. The fuel tank cap must be securely in place, the seal in good condition and there must be no obvious leaks. Don't forget to check the rear tank level if the vehicle has one and that the cap is fitted correctly. Different vehicles have different parts to look at. Tail lifts should be locked secure in the travel position. The same goes for stabiliser legs on vehicles fitted with cranes. Check that the hydraulic reservoir and associated piping isn't showing signs of leaking. If your vehicle has drop sides or other detachable or movable panels, they must be properly closed and secured. On tankers, make sure that the outlet valves are fully shut off and showing no signs of product discharge, with the hoses in place in their racks and properly fastened down. On curtain siders, make sure the poles are properly in position and no buckles have been left unattached. Look out for bulges in the curtain, which could indicate that part of the load has slipped. Remember, out on the road, you are legally responsible for the vehicle and its load, even if you did not load it yourself. Don't forget to check the side guards, wings and mud flaps for damage and security as you go round. 
do your rear marker lights work? Check the rear underrun bar and that the rear reflective markers and number plates are clean. Work your way around the rear and continue your check, making sure all parts of the vehicle are secure and in good condition. Is the access step firm? Are ladders and handrails serviceable? Are the doors or rear shutters properly closed? And if you're taking a trailer, don't forget to display a yellow trailer plate that matches the tractor unit's registration number. Once you've finished at the rear, work your way back up the vehicle's offside, again checking all relevant items, and get back into the cab. Take a moment to ensure that you're comfortable in the vehicle before setting off. Are the seat belts in good working order? If the vehicle is fitted with one, you must wear it. Your seating and steering position should be set to allow you maximum comfort, security and all-round observation to allow proper control of the vehicle. And finally, check that the vehicle's mirrors are at the correct angle to maximise all-round vision to give you a clear view of the road and other road users. You must now fill in any relevant forms. You may be required to do this even if there are no defects. Make sure any defects are notified in accordance with your employer's instructions. The important thing is to have a routine. Let's recap. First, check the oil and coolant. Next, sit in the driver's seat and check items in the cab. Then, beginning at the offside cab door, walk around the vehicle in an anti-clockwise direction. Throughout the check, ask yourself, is my vehicle safe and legal? Is my license safe today? Always carry out a check every time you take over any vehicle. Follow a regular routine. That way you're less likely to miss anything. Record and report defects according to your employer's instructions. This is the evidence that you have properly checked your vehicle. Remember, it's absolutely crucial to continue to monitor the roadworthiness of your vehicle as you drive and throughout your shift. Pay particular attention to the functioning of your brakes and steering gear. These are critical to your safety and the safety of others, and the penalties are high if they're found to be defective. The main messages I would want to say to drivers are do those daily checks for your own protection as well as for others' protection. That's what they're there for. A simple walk round check could mean the difference between being involved in a fatal accident and not being involved in a fatal accident. It's as simple as that.